Hey everyone, so excuse the casual wear, it's super hot today and there's not many options for me to wear. Uh, so that's why my hair is up and I'm wearing a tank top. But uh, today I am continuing on the discussion from my previous video where I shared some classic fragrances. But unlike last time where I talked about old fashioned perfumes that I have in my collection, I wanted to share the fragrances that I think are timeless. So these are ones that I believe have really stood the test of time that um, if you're not aware of the historical context behind the creation of these perfumes, you might not be able to tell what decade they're from. So I think compared to the ones I picked last time, these are probably going to be more subjective. I think that term timeless is very subjective and it is influenced by a lot of factors. I had mentioned before in my previous video that we might see a perfume or a piece of art as being dated due to various factors. Um, one being, you know, some notes are just not used anymore. Um, so if I look at these choices here, I don't think the explanations I'm going to give is as clear cut. Uh, so again, um, you might not agree with my choices here and I think part of that is that that term timeless really can mean different things to different people. Let's start off with one of the oldest fragrances that has been around for centuries. I did talk about this in my citrus video. This is 4711, the original Eau de Cologne. There is a German name for it that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. Uh, Andreas, if you're watching, um, please let me know how to pronounce it. But this is one that has inspired so many brands to produce similar smelling fragrances. To this day, I think people still want to, to smell clean and fresh um, with fragrances that have neroli and citrus notes and you know aromatic qualities to it. And this definitely fits that scent profile. This has inspired so many brands to produce Similar smelling fragrances like Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford, although that one is much more expensive. You could get this for the fraction of that price. I think I got this bottle for, it had to be less than 15 bucks. So I think the fact that this is quite affordable and it has a lot of notes that are still used today makes it quite a timeless scent. I had mentioned that I love using this as a shower spray because it really gives that fresh feeling. Uh, I don't know if you remember this old, older ad that Tom Ford released for Neroli Portofino where they had uh, this couple kind of throw um, perfume at each other um, from the bottles from um, Neroli Portofino. And I kind of get that feeling when I wear this, except I don't have to worry about wasting like hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Um, but this, to me, I think is going to last a long time in terms of how it's still in the market. Um, yeah, so I recommend it if you haven't tried it. It's fairly easy to get. You could find it in, on discounter websites. For my next choice, I think a lot of people would agree if you're into classics. When I wear this, um, even though I know it's been made, it was made in the 20s, I still think that it's a fragrance that really isn't tied to a decade when you smell it. People might disagree though, especially if you're into more of the recent releases, but I think it's a timeless scent. So I have Chalimar. I have the Eau de Toilette, and I think this formulation um, and this concentration definitely smells timeless to me. But I also have the Eau de Cologne, two versions of it. This one is a newer formulation. Uh, this bottle is from 2010. And this one, I think dates back to the 70s if I'm not mistaken. This is a vintage bottle. Uh, so I'll talk about what they smell like, but I also have the Extra de Parfum, which I do consider to be timeless, um, but I'm kind of taking more time to get to know it. I just got it, so I don't want to talk about it in a video when I'm not too familiar with it but I'll stick to these. So the Eau de Toilette, the current formulation, to me, it's not as deep as the Eau de Parfum and the Extra de Parfum. I would actually argue the Eau de Parfum smells the most dated compared to the concentrations. Some might disagree with that, but 
Um, there's something 80s about it, and I think that decade in general tends to produce more dated smelling fragrances uh, based on my perceptions on fragrances. But um, the Eau de Toilette is more floral. Uh, I definitely get more iris from this. It's quite powdery. There is obviously a vanilla from the vanillin that's in this. I get a little bit of resins, but definitely not as much as one of the, the Eau de Colognes that I have here. Um, and I think because it has vanilla, and that is a note that's still widely used, this is a timeless fragrance. I, I think if someone who didn't know the history of Galan or Shalomar picked this up in a store and then put it on themselves, they might think it's, you know, a fragrance from more recent decades. Uh, now the Eau de Colognes, to me, these are the easiest to wear, even in its vintage form. So I'll talk a little bit about the differences between both. So um, if I'm referring to the vintage version, this to me, even though it's an older bottle, the citruses really were well preserved. I think the person I bought this from really did a great job um, keeping it away from light and in a cool place. Uh, so I get a lot of the bergamot that's in this, but compared to the newer version, the development of this is much slower. It's like it was expanded. Um, it, it goes from the citrus top and then later on I get a lot of resins. Um, I forget what resins are in this, maybe Opopanax, but I, I get that resinous feel from it. And then later on, later on, later on the vanilla comes out more. And the vanilla to me does smell quite contemporary. Um, it, it smells like a lot of the vanillas that I would get from you know, later releases that you would just pick off a shelf today. And what makes this more unique though is a little bit of that leathery and incense base. I don't get much of the leather in this compared to the Excavated Parfum, um, but it's there. And I think that little hint of animalic notes are kind of in this too, but it's not overbearing at all. Compared to other vintage fragrances, I, I don't get as much of the animalic touches in this. But yeah, I, I really like the Eau de Cologne. Now this one I do enjoy. I have both because they smell quite different to me. So the development of this is faster. Like it moves very quickly from the top. Um, I get the citrus notes, but that really disappears quite quickly within not even a minute. And then it kind of skips the resinous part that I get from the vintage version. So from the citrus notes, it goes straight into the, the vanilla, the vanillin, um, and I get more of the kumarin, the tonka bean type of smell in this fragrance. But also, strangely enough, uh, this is more leathery on my skin compared to the vintage version. So if you're kind of debating, you know, what version of the Eau de Cologne you want to get, if you want something more leathery, you might want to opt for the later formulation uh, in the bottle that looks like this. Um, so I mean that's my personal experiences with both, uh, so far at least. Many people might disagree with my next picks because I think there are some people that associate florals, especially solid floors, with being old-fashioned. Um, I don't agree with it, especially if it smells realistic. To me, if a fragrance smells very realistically like flowers, that is something that would stand the test of time. And I guess there is something about art that is photorealistic that seems to transcend time. Like I think about some classic paintings um, that I would see in museums that look very photorealistic. Even though they they were made centuries before some of the uh, more abstract art, those just seem like pieces of art that are timeless. And I see that, that same thing in perfumes. So let's start off with um, Serge Luton's. I think when it comes to florals, especially white florals, I love this house. Um, Vivi had mentioned in her video, she showed her whole collection for her Serge Luton's bottles, 
that she loves white florals from this house and I definitely agree because they are very well balanced um, and to me the ones that I'm showing today are very realistic so a la nuit is one that I think will continue to be a classic the only thing though is that this is not as readily accessible anymore it's now in the bell jar if I'm not mistaken it's not in this rectangular bottle so just thinking about the accessibility of this possibly might impact whether or not this is going to be timeless but I think the the realistic jasmine note that's in this is beautiful and interestingly I was reading up on the history of perfumery and um solo floors I think were more wildly popular prior to the more abstract fragrances like Chanel number no. five um but I think the solid floors that are more popular like from the 90s and today tend to be more realistic. Um, instead of just extracting straight from a flower, it, it seems like what the perfumers like Christopher Sheldrick do is they kind of think about the flower but also think about maybe the environment that the flower is grown in or other parts of the flower. So for example, in this one, I get a little bit of that stem um, from you know flowers and there is something more to this than just jasmine and yet it does evoke this image of a jasmine bush to me so that's why I really really enjoy this one um, I used to just wear this in the springtime but I'm realizing I actually prefer it when it's super hot it really does bloom in the heat I get a lot of a lot more complex aspects from this. It does turn a little bit creamy towards the dry down when it is summertime. And I feel the same way about this one. This is a newer acquisition, uh, Only or Lily. I bought this after I finished a sample from Vivi. Um, I have a feeling that a lot of my collection is going to look more like hers because I really, really like her taste. But Only, I really enjoy this because it smells just like my mother-in-law's garden. She has a jasmine bush, and I know this is not a jasmine fragrance, but there is some greenness in this and the white floral notes that I get from this that is very reminiscent of that garden. And because it's realistic, it, I think this is one that I see myself wearing for a long time. Uh, interesting thing about Lily, and uh, this is supposed to be Lily. It's not Lily of the Valley. It's a little bit different in how they smell. Um, when I think about lilies, I actually do get different nuances of other flowers. So the jasmine, especially like the star jasmine type of smell. And I get a bit of lilacs. I don't know if you've smelled like freshly picked lilacs in real life. It's one of the most beautiful, prettiest smells I've ever smelled. And I get a little bit of that in this fragrance. Um, so I think, I love how it captures different nuances of different flowers, but it's clearly very much a lily fragrance. I know some might associate lilies with funerals and luckily I don't have that scent association. I don't think about death when I wear this fragrance. It just really makes me think about my mother-in-law's garden and that is a very joyful place for me, so that's why I really enjoy wearing this fragrance. Another house that I think really produces great florals, really realistic florals, has to be Lac de saint Papineau. And I have Mimosa Pogma, one of my favorite Mimosa fragrances of all time because it really does smell like a bouquet of Mimosa. And I have the vintage bottle. I have tried the, the recent formulation. I honestly don't think there's much of a difference. If there's anything that is different, this does smell a little bit more honeyed, a little bit sweeter, and it is stronger in its performance. But I think it might be due to just how it aged. Um, you're gonna be fine if you just pick up a newer bottle. I think both are beautiful. But Mimosa Pour Moi, again, smells like Mimosa flowers. I think if, I were to describe what the flower smells like, I would refer back to what um, Smell of Petrichor had described it to be. I don't know if you know her channel, uh, Her she was releasing videos before, uh, she's not very active anymore, but she had said that 
the flower itself kind of smells like almonds and cucumber. Um, I think those are the two main things. And I definitely agree with that. To me, um, I get more of like a milky type of smell to it. So I kind of envision almond milk. And I definitely agree with the cucumber and nuances to it too. Uh, I like Mimosa Promo also because it does have the green aspect of the flower too. So this just really puts a smile on my face every time I wear it. I really, really enjoy it. And again, because it is very realistic, I think it's a fragrance that will stand the test of time. This was actually made in the 90s. So um, I think it's still popular today. Or maybe not as popular as before, but people still talk about it on their channels. Now for the last house I wanted to mention, I wanted to pick a house that I think really does a great job of producing fragrances that are timeless. And to me, that house is Diptyque. And the reasons why I think it is quite a timeless house is because it's never followed trends. Or I guess there are some trends that did follow with certain fragrances. But in general, if I look at their older offerings, especially from um, previous decades, they didn't really follow the trends from that decade. So one example is Lambo Dan Lo. I don't have a full bottle, but I do have the solid perfume of it. I have samples of the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. And this was made in the 80s. And if you know the 80s, it's, you know, made of really big fragrances. Ambery, spicy fragrances like Opium and uh, Chanel Coco. But this is a gorgeous rose scent. It is a juicy rose because it has some black currant notes in it and then it's green too with tomato leaf. I was surprised to find out that it was made in the 80s when I first tried it. And so because of that, I do find it to be a timeless fragrance. But they do offer some other ones. I think a lot of their floral fragrances are quite timeless for the same reasons I've mentioned for um, the Lac de Sun per perfume and uh, Sartre-Dons. But yeah, if you want you know, timeless scents from a particular house, I definitely would recommend Diptyque. All right, so those are my classic timeless fragrances. Let me know what you think about my choices. Again, I think this is gonna be a very subjective topic. Uh, let me know if you agree with my picks or if you have your own opinions on what you consider to be timeless. Uh, let me know in the comments below and I can't wait to chat with you about this. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.